que toi je n'ai plus envie Yes, yes, so hell is here. Today we have our second Forestella reaction. This is Je Suis Malade. Our first Forestella reaction was Scarborough Fair. My reaction yesterday was to the same song, Je Suis Malade, but by a different artist, Lara Fabio. You might find it interesting to watch that reaction to see how she treated the song versus the original song. So I'm certainly interested to see how Forestella are gonna treat it as well. Lara Fabian's version was like the original, mostly piano and one voice. Here with Forestella, we have four voices and I imagine there'll be some sort of instrumentation or other the musical parts, if that will be just piano or strings or backing chorus, I don't know. The next thing to note is that this is in French. I imagine they will be doing it in French. A lot of recommendations that I received for Forestella were telling me songs and the variety of languages that they sing in. And boy, do they cover a lot of languages in their performances. Now, I don't speak French myself, so I won't be a good judge of pronunciation, but their English and Scarborough Fair was fantastic. And then finally, as I always do after the first time I hear a group, I've learned their names so I can refer to them by name. I'm a bit scared my pronunciation will be abominable here, so I apologise if it is. So we have Kang Hyung Ho, who's the countertenor, with that beautiful natural light countertenor voice we heard in Scarborough Fair. We have Cho Ming Yu, who's the tenor with that leggero tenor voice of his, that light tenor voice of his. And then we have, okay, I, is it Bei or Bai? But I'm going to say Bei. Bei Du Hun, who is the baritone tenor, baritenor, if you want to call it that. And then finally we have Ko Wu Rim, who is the bass. I may still refer to them by voice type, though, again, I mean, no disrespect if I do that. Okay, let's get straight into it. Je ne fume plus, je ne m'aime plus d'histoire. Je suis seul sur toi, je suis laid sur toi, comme une orpheline. Dans un doctor, je n'ai plus envie de vivre ma vie, ma vie. C'est ce qu'on te parle. Je n'ai plus de vie et même mon lit Je te consomme mon quête de cœur Quand tu tombes, je suis Malade, complètement malade Comme quand ma messe dans le soir Et que me laisse sur la paix Mon Dieu, ce soir je suis malade Parfaitement malade Ta chiffon ne s'est jamais bon Tu m'en ne s'est jamais sûr Et ça va faire bien dans des sons Que tu donnes Well, th these audience shots are so powerful. It just shows how much they affect people who are listening to them, you know, myself included. Great performance so far. We're only a third of the way through. A third of the way through and we've only heard two singers so far. Interesting. And, and there were a lot of interesting things there that we've heard. So as usual, I'm going to go over the analysis of what we've heard. If you don't want to see that, go to the timestamp here. This rain setting, very, very clever. And then we get this accordion introduction. 
a quintessentially French instrument, you know, it kind of is, it's always used in films when you see shots of Paris, etc. I think the accordion was invented in Austria. But yeah, you know, very French by modern standards. Other thing to note is we are in the key of F sharp, which is quite different to the original, which was C, and Lara Fabian's version, which was B. Being in F sharp allows for this low opening that we get, which is very low. That's on the C sharp down here which is a few notes lower than the lowest your typical choral bass is expected to sing. He opens with a very airy voice, which is what I've seen with the other two versions of this song I've heard. And he combines this airy voice with a talking aspect that we see again in the original and the other version. That then leads into the second verse, which is this part. In my Lara reaction yesterday, I included a couple of piano clips showing how her version was different to the original because her version became different at this second verse here. I think I'll show the piano part here as well at this second verse so we can compare all three and see how different or similar they are to each other. So it's interesting to see how different arrangements interpret the same bit of music. And this is how Forestella's version goes at this point, again transposed into the same key as the others. Overall though, especially because of the beginning, we have the impression that this arrangement is very different. You know, that accordion was just so unexpected. I just was not expecting that. Another big difference is the treatment of the title lyrics, Je suis malade. And I think Forestella do it really, really well here. This is the first time we hear it. Je suis malade. In the original, we have two breaks in that phrase. Je suis malade. Je suis malade. I think it's so clever how Forestella here used this phrase, which means I am sick, to move on to the next singer. It's almost like they're passing the sickness from Ko Wu Rim, the bass, to Bei Du Hun, the baritone. And in the baritone, when he receives the melody, the range of his whole melody of this section is from here to here. That's not small, and we see his falsetto too. Again, he's utilizing a more airy voice here. And accompanied by the accordion, it works so well. All right, let's carry on. Yeah, this is nice, isn't it? What an arrangement as well. We're seeing everything. So many different cool musical aspects here that I just quickly want to talk over that last section. We're about two thirds of the way through now. That seemed like a natural place to pause. I'm excited to see what comes next. Just going back to where we carried on from.
A few things that really stood out to me. Firstly, a key change. We're moving slightly up, slightly higher. That kind of allows for more of a climax later on, probably. But the main thing is what the arrangement reminds me of here. We hear the beat come in for the first time, other than in the introduction, I think there was a beat. But since they've started singing, I don't think there's been a beat so far. And we have brass instruments playing. In such a piece of music as this, you know, very, very somber, this combination of brass and beat just reminds me of sad occasions, namely to mark the occasions of death. It's very, very somber. Maybe the reason I say this is because there's a famous example, a piece of music called Music for the Funeral of Queen Mary. It's by Henry Purcell, who was an English Baroque composer. It might just be me at this point in the Forestella arrangement that triggers these thoughts of misery and sadness and death, but it is certainly fitting feeling this way considering the subject matter of the song. And then we do get the tenor's entry, Chomming You. As we thought we might, so they are moving up one by one. And then later on we finally have more than one voice singing at the same time. We have a trio of voices here. We can only see two, but there are three voices. And the chord that they're holding on there is what we call a diminished chord. What they're singing is this. A diminished chord is quite tense. It's almost quite unstable. We have more singers now than just one. So you'd think that this should provide power. It should provide assurance. But the chord that they're singing and holding here gives off the complete different feel to that. I think it's very clever. And then they hand off to Kang Hyung Ho, the counter tenor, as we heard in Scarborough Fair. <laughs> But he's singing in his chest voice, his full voice, countertenors typically sing their falsetto. This explains a lot, because in my last reaction, I was getting very confused. If you haven't watched that, the Scarborough Fair reaction, do check it out. It was my first time hearing, and the only plausible explanation I could think of, based on how many voices I was hearing, and who was singing at any point in time, was that at least one, probably more of them, had to be covering multiple ranges and different types of voices. This confirms it. And talking of the countertenor... Blimey, he's gone to the top C there. That, if you've seen my Dimash videos, is what I call the wow note for operatic tenors. <laughs> and Forestella's countertenor is doing it in his chest voice. Wow. That then suddenly opens up the arrangement. <laughs> We now have multiple voices singing not in homophony. So for the first time, they're not singing the same words at the same time in the same rhythms. Now we have counterpoint. Each voice is its own entity, its own independent melody. Yeah, I'm liking where this arrangement is going. Let's, let's continue now to the end. Dad, that had a very physical reaction on me. <laughs> 
I don't know what happened there at the end. If you could feel the goosebumps I was having, I, I, uh, that's slightly embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just so happy this song was written in the first place because I saw Lara's version yesterday, this today. Just, yeah, great, great music to behold, I think. Let's go over some points from that last section that we just heard. We get a whispered line here, which I think was a very nice choice of line. <laughs> I will die alone. It's like the last decision he's making. He's accepted that he's going to die. He's lost the strength to even create any audible notes to say that. And another great treatment of the lyrics, I think, is this bit. That's a line talking about singing. And now there's two of them singing in thirds with each other. Much more melodic than the previous whispered words there that we had just before. Which then leads into this section. The crying of it. They sing this section a cappella. Lara Fabian did this section a cappella too, which really surprised me. And I'm so happy for Estella chose to do this a cappella too because we get to witness just some great, really, really tight four part close harmony a cappella singing. And why it sounds particularly tight is because they're all moving up and down together, which you don't commonly see with a cappella singing. Normally you need some variety in, in movement. The next bit I'm about to play, I don't need to say anything. You probably saw my reaction visibly there. And all I need to say is just goosebumps, goosebumps. <laughs> And the power of this chord. Strangely, the quietest note here is the tenor because he's singing a G, which we can barely hear amongst the other parts. That note there, the G for a tenor is perfect for them to belt out, you know, super, super loud and powerfully. And then towards the end we get. There, you've got the baritone singing a D. You know, that's like prime counter tenor range. And then just after that, the counter tenor up to the F sharp. And then finally this lovely ending. It's a great chordal progression. They're just going up and down, building and then releasing tension and then finishing with a bang. Yeah, I don't need to say anything else. We can leave it there. Just great performance. I think that was a great, great performance. As always, thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments which other Forestella performances you'd like me to react to. I'd appreciate a like and subscribe. And if you like my channel and want to support the channel, then you can do so by joining either the Patreon or YouTube memberships linked in the description down below. And I will see you next time.